Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series, this is episode number 80. And today we're returning with two big games with our Bluebirds as face Doncaster Rovers away in the FA Cup third round and Liverpool away at Anfield in the Premier League. So before we get to the games though, just come getting on off camera. And of course, in the last episode, you saw our final Champions League group game against Porto, which of course we lost, but was meaningless regardless. And then the 3-0 victory away at Molyneux in the Premier League. Three games off camera, all in the Premier League. And as you can see, three wins from three starting. Uh, with a good victory at home against Spurs by three goals to one. Uh, Maria scored our first goal, 10 minutes in, against all the big teams. This is Paleo's sort of best team to face, if you will. His record against Spurs is pretty decent, as uh, he made it 1-0. Then Ramsden had a great debut season for us, made it 2-0, 21 it's in. Uh, a rare error from Kim Pembe allowed Jovic to make it 2-1 to get Spurs back in the game as he was caught ball watching, but just before the break, Ryan Sessegnon was weaker right foot, smashed one in to give us a three point in our first game where we've sold out the new look stadium. As you see there, 42,000 seats all sold out, including 3,000 away Spurs fans too, so that was really nice to see our first sellout since the stadium expansion. And after that, the win on Boxing Day away from over the Riverside Stadium against the Borough scored five goals, all all in the first half as we got a convincing 3-0 win. And the interesting thing about this game was that all five of our goals came in, uh, sorry, I say came from crosses in the first half. All five goals in the first half, all from crosses as well. Uh, Cessnion bagged the brace, but Maria continued a very good run towards the end of, uh, end of the first half of the year with a, uh, a uh, hat-trick in this game. Three fantastic headers, although one I think took a deflection, I think, the second one. But uh, regardless, a final win regardless, really good win and uh, all goals coming from crosses in the first half. And uh, two days after that, a 3-0 win in our final game off camera at home against Brighton Hove Albion, where, uh, where uh, Andre, Andre Onana played his final game for the club after over 250 appearances, final game in the car seat shirt. I thought, I don't want to go out with that performance away in Portugal. I wanted to have just one more game at home so the home crowd can see him off. And it was great to see him get a clean sheet as well. We're taking on Brighton, who right now are rock bottom. They are way adrift of safety right now and certs to go down. And uh, Alenia scored our first two goals. First from a spot kick, then from a free kick. And then Maria wrapped the points uh, with 12 to go to make it 3-0. Uh, now had very little to do. Only one shot on his goal. We still made a save regardless. And again, it was nice to send him off with a clean sheet in front of the home crowd. So right now in the Premier League, as you can see on the back of those three wins off camera, we are now up to fourth place and back in the Champions League places with 18 games to go. We're seven points off Chelsea, who still lead the league and they got the better goal difference record as well. But we have clawed our way back in the Champions League places and again, we're not that many points off top spot. I, I don't think we're in a serious title race this year. With lots of games to go, we still could be. Long way to go. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's beating the big teams that's going to be our problem problem for us this year. If we can do that, we have a chance. But these games here in January, Liverpool away and Arsenal at home, they're going to be absolutely massive. And uh, I think these two games here in January, we'll find out come the end of this month if we're in a serious title race or not. And confirmation for those that missed the last episode, you can see there the Champions League first knockout round has been drawn. We'll be taking on the Spanish side, Valencia first legged away in Mestalla. Uh, that will be coming in the next episode. And of course, here is the new man in, Stefan Fans. The deal has now gone through as we're now in the January transfer transfer window already at just 20 years old and just turned 20 back in this uh, back in September he's still regarded as truly one of the world's football global superstars that gets given too easy I think though in this year's FM and uh, of course his stats we discussed them in the last episode absolutely phenomenal you know physically very good at six for three of 17 strength 19 jumping and 16 agility mentally too very very good we want that positioning to go up but other than that he's fine all across the board there and again his goalkeeping stats too one-on-one's 18 reflexes 17 hand Handling 16, his aerial ability is very good too. He, he looks very good as a sweeper keeper, and I must say, I'm, I'm very excited. Five year deal, 160 grand a week. I, I don't think I showed the contract in the last episode, but here it is for you here 160 grand, five, uh, five year deal. There is a minute few release calls to foreign clubs for 150 million pounds, but other than that, whilst it is a pricey contract, I think based on his stats, and again, at just 20 years old, I think he's definitely worth it. And as for Andre Onana as well, this is the contract he's got at Schalke. He's also on over 100 grand a week, now 115 grand a week uh, for Schalke on a four year deal. And yeah, we're going to miss Andre. We, we really are. I'm still in his favoured personnel, which I like. But either way, farewell, Onana. We'll, we'll miss you a lot, mate. And just before our first game as well, quick look at the dynamics of the club where you can see right now there are two issues. Maria is still asking to leave and there is a good chance he will if the right big comes in in January. There are four, uh, sorry, five clubs interested right now, but I'm not going to sell him to a domestic club. If the uh, Madrid boys put bids in of £100 million plus, I'll let him go. Otherwise, he's staying. I'm not selling him to a 
domestic club because I know that will that'll come up to haunt us and they'll get stronger and we'll get weaker. That's not the right move to do, I think. And uh, Van Dijk is not happy. He's not had too much first-team football this year. But there has been a change in the dynamics as well uh, with the hierarchy too. Due to Onana leaving, we now only have two team leaders, Maria and Sessegnon. A third one will join, play on Ryan at some point, and the most likely outcome is Jason, the captain, going back as team leader. But it might also possibly be gone Calvez, who's been at the club for a very long time, and as we know, is uh, one of the best players of the team. Or I'm hoping Kim Pembe. I'm hoping Kim Pembe steps up from highly influential to team leader. That's my that's my preferred uh, change in the hierarchy. But I guess we'll have to wait and see, and I'll keep you updated when things change. So first game today. It oh okay. Well, it's going to be Doncaster Rovers away in the FA Cup third round, and here we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, five thirty. I didn't realize we were in the evening kickoff today. I, I thought we were playing at three p.m. Never mind. But yeah, evening kickoff. Doncaster Rovers right now in League One. We faced them last year in the Carabao Cup, and we beat them. But they'll be sniffing a cup set today. We might be in good form right now, but they'll be thinking with all the attention on Stefan fans making his debut, they could sniff a cup set and this could be a potential banana peel for us today. So on the injury report right now, uh, Gonzalez, Pedro Antonio and Dennis are all down, but these are day-to-day -day injuries, not serious blows. Now, of course, Pedro Antonio's had that fractured uh, fractured arm. He should be coming back soon, hopefully, for the Liverpool game if we're lucky. But uh, the OG's still down. He should make the Liverpool game and Dennis as well. Hopefully, if he comes back fit enough, we'll also play in that game too. And this is our team, 4 2 3 one our normal tiki taka style of play. As Stefan Fans makes his debut between the sticks. The back four has gone Cowboys, Van Dyke. I'm going to put Kim Pembe in for Jal Carl. So I, I want to play the kid, but. I, I think I've got to play it safe here, just in case. Van Dijk, Kim Pembe, Stefano. Midfield duo, Ramsden and McKenney. And the attacking midfield duo, Raviotta on the left, Jason on the right, and Eleni Frunio supporting Paleo Maria up top. And on the bench, Henderson, Jao Carlos, Davis, Guillermo, Session on Sterling, and Ryan Dumphy as well. So first game, it's Don Castro's in the FA Cup third round. Let's avoid the banana skin. Come on, you bluebirds. You know, it's worth pointing out, we've had some very lucky escapes in the FA Cup in recent years, as Jason is denied from the free kick as Doncaster clear. It was actually, funnily enough, in our FA Cup winning year, where we had like three lower league sides in the run to the final, and we needed extra time against Sunderland. We needed a penalty against, oh, I can't remember now, Fleetwood Town, I think it was, and we needed a replay against Blackburn Rovers. So we, we do have a bit of complacency issues when taking taking on a lower league side in the cup. So this is why I came back for the game. Because I don't think this is going to be as straightforward as we'd like it to be. Still 0-0, 20 minutes in. Corner though. Jason takes it. Deep to the far post. Maria heads on. Cleared away. But as Ramsden knocks it down, Paleo takes the first touch and does squeeze it in. And that settles some nerves as well. Very good start. But the longer the game goes on, still deadlocked at 0-0. The more doubt creeps into your mind. But Maria relieves that doubt, puts us in front and continues his goal scoring run. He's now scored at least one goal in all of our last four games in all competition. Alan, uh, Alan uh, heads it to him. Paleo takes a touch. Squeeze it past the keeper. 1-0 Cardiff. Ramston takes over the halfway line and across comes Allen. Nice ball through to Rabiotta down left-hand side. First time across to Paleo. Oh, yeah. What a cross by Pierre. You know, we haven't actually seen him that much compared to last year because this year he's not been performing as good. But that's a lovely cross by the young Italian and Maria doubles his goal tally. You know, it's crazy. He'd only scored three goals in like 12 games in the Premier League. But just before the January transfer window opens, that's when he starts to perform. Conspiracy theories here. Is he trying to put himself in the shop window for other teams. Who knows? But either way, Doncaster nil card two. Jason's corner. Rabiotta flicks on 3-0 and that should be the job done now. Plenty of time for Doncaster to get back in the game. I do feel we should be able to see this one out now, but if they get an early goal... I mean, listen, based on what's happened this week in the Champions League, you know, 3 0 is not a comfortable scoreline, is it? As, uh, as Turnbull receives the ball down left hand side and now steps infield back to Ferguson as they look for an opening in our back line. We've got a lot of men behind the ball right now. They're fighting, str struggling to, uh, to find an opening as Colson's over the top. But there is Midgley. Oh, and fans can't keep it out, but it is disallowed for offside. His clean sheet stands for now, won't count. I want to take Maria off, but as Jason takes aim from the free kick and hits the crossbar, and oh, Maria does turn in. There we go. I was just about to say, if you take a player off on two goals in FM, oftentimes they'll complain to you after the game that they had a chance at hat trick and you denied it. But either way, Jason's free kick off the crossbar, and now I can take player off as he will claim the match ball. Easiest goal of the game, just nods it over from two yards. 4-0, game done. 
Held up down left-hand side. Dinks one in. Dumphy is there. Oh, yeah, great to see. Ryan Dumphy gets his second goal of the season. He scored against, uh, was it was it Olympiacos in the Champions League group stage with his head? And now he's got another one as well. He was out on loan at Millwall last year. Scored 17 goals in the championship this year. Give him a few minutes, and he's not done too badly in limited game time. Nice cross by Gon Calvis. Dumphy with a header right into the bottom corner, and it's 5-0. Well, I did say there could be a potential cup set on the cars today, but instead we get the job done pretty convincingly and make it through to the next round. Final to final score, Maria with another hatchet. That's now two in his last three games, I believe. Very impressive indeed. And for Stefan fans, it's great to see him get, get a clean sheet. Not yet much to do today with uh, the assured body language as well. So final to final score into the fourth round. Great stuff. Pogba wants Maria to make the Real Madrid switch. He's, uh, he's tapping up a Spanish forward. And, you know, if, if they put a bid in, like 70 million is not enough. I'm sorry, but 70 million in today's footballing world for this caliber of a striker is not enough. It's not, I'm sorry, it's ridiculous, man. Like, it's it's so frustrating, FM, how the true market valuation of your players always seems to be lower than the AI teams. Like, the bids you receive for your stars are always much lower than the bids that you're expected to make for stars of other clubs. 70 million, that's that's nothing. I mean, it's, it's not nothing, obviously, but you know what I'm trying to say? It's like, as Arsenal have been assessed on here, no, 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 Ryan Stein. It's, it's like, if, if, if you have, like, a, a star player... Sack. Thank you. If you have a star player and, and they're wanted by a club, so often the bids are just knockoff valuation bids or only just above it. And like 63, like 63 million is his market valuation. Based on what some players are going for in this save, that's absurd. So just before the game on the weekend, we're going to do the fourth round draw for the FA Cup and we'll find out who we'll be taking on in the next round. And hoping for a lower league side at home, but let's find out who we've got together. Dun 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 Wow. Really? 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 There we go. Middlesbrough away from over the Riverside Stadium. And uh, there we go. That's got a long time to get through there. All right. Middlesbrough away at the Riverside Stadium. And uh, I, I think I think I will feel a strong enough side for that. It's going to come uh, between Everton and Burnley. Wow. Look at the contract. Brahim once here at Cardiff. He's out of contract in the summer, which is the big problem. His stats are fantastic, to be fair. We haven't really used him, and it would be a shame to let him go on a free. But look at the contract. He's like, oh, geez, look at the contract his agent is currently asking for here. Um, let's see Let's see if we can duck this down here. Now, he's not going to play too many times for us, I think, in the first few years of that deal anyway. So I feel we can get away with offering that much. He'll stay on 45 grand a week. And I just won't, won't play him 15 or 20 times. But uh, it's still a lot of money, isn't it? Let's, let's try and go down to 85 grand a week just in case and see what he says to that. Okay, fine. 45 grand a week. It's a lot of money, but again, his stats are phenomenal. And he is so young as well. I've just got to make sure he plays no more than 14 league games for us. I'll play him in the Cups and play him in Europe, but no more than 14 league games in those four years for Raheem. And again, look at this. 45 million up front from Arsenal. And installments and international appearances make up the rest to make 62 million. It's, yeah, six, 62 million. Really? That's all you're going to put in? 62 million pounds. It's just, that's, the, that's one of the most frustrating parts of, of FM to me. When you want to buy their stars, you've got to pay like 150 million pounds. But for your stars, they'll, they'll put in basically nothing. And I don't really care what player is asking for either. He's got two and a half years left on his contract. So there's plenty of time for us to, to keep him and try and talk him round during that time as well. Selling him now for undervaluation when we're in no rush to do so. And to a domestic club as well. That'll be really bad business. Oh, look at that. Right on cue. Maria is set to stay at Cardiff as Arsenal have now dropped their intentions to sign him. And he's with, he wants to withdraw his transfer as well, which I'll accept. I'll accept. Player, you can be taken on transfer list. That's totally fine for me. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm still not against selling it if the right big comes in. But it's got to be over £100 million and it's got to be from a foreign club as well. You're not staying in the Premier League because you'll come back to haunt us. I just know it. Yeah, this is getting ridiculous now. Like, it's, it's not going to happen. 
It's not going to happen. I, I, I don't understand why these bids are so low. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Anyway, uh, Brahim has just signed that new big contract on 45 grand a week. So good to know he's not going on a free transfer come the end of the season. And again, when you look at this guy's stats, he's only turned 20 years old a couple of months ago. Mentally, the guy is absolutely fantastic. And with a driven personality, regarded as a wonder kid, he's, he's, he's the guy, man. He's, he's back here now after his loan spell at Atalanta United. This is definitely one of the future players in our central midfield here. Anyway, uh, yeah, second and final game today is indeed Liverpool way at Anfield right now sat in second place in the table. So a big game here for both teams as we're currently playing catch up to the league leaders, Chelsea. And this will be our team for the game. 4 2 3 one once again as we're on a winning run using this system. Uh, Stefano just picked up a knock in training. So he's going to be out of the game with a twisted ankle. And uh, Guilherme also uh, picked up a knock as well. So he's out of the team today. And Antonio is back on the bench. But Dennis and Gonzalez are back in the starting 11. And this is our team. Henderson is in goal for the game because this guy has we know comes good in big games. And I think he deserves it. So Dean in goal, back for Ogon Cowles, Kimpembe, Jordi, Nodrizola with Alenia and Roundsden through the middle. You might notice too, this year I'm playing a box-to-box -box more than a ball-winning midfielder alongside a, a deep-line playmaker, just to make us more, uh, more aggressive on the offensive end. And of course, Rounds has got the defensive stats to track back as well. Uh, attacking field trio, Cessna on the left, Dennis on the right, and the OG through the middle, supporting Maria on a great run right now up top. And on the bench, whoops, and on the bench, fans Van Dyke, Davis, McKenney, Rabiota, Stern and Pedro Antonio as well. Second and final game, massive one here in the top four. Liverpool versus Cardiff. Come on, you bluebirds. Both teams in very good form. I think we've got the best form in the division right now, though, so that's great to see. And this year as well, we have actually started to improve our record against big teams. We've beaten Spurs back-to-back. -back. We beat Liverpool at the Cardiff City Stadium as well. So we are starting to get a little bit better now at taking on the bigger sides. And I think we beat City this year as well. I'm pretty sure we did too. But the first time it does come to the Reds as Ake's header is all oh, nodded off the frame and the goal at the far post there. It was well far post to near post and then off the post. Still nil-nil. First chance going to the Reds though. Pembe also on an early booking as well. We'll have to watch that. But we're still tied at nil-nil. I'll definitely take the scoreline come full time. But keeping Liverpool... <laughs> off the score sheet for 90 minutes is an almost impossible task. Vinicius Junior with the finish and there is the breakthrough. And it was coming. It was coming. Kovacic picks him out on the edge of the area. The Brazilian steps inside and a nice finish into the bottom corner. No chance for Henderson. 1-0 Liverpool. You know there are certain grounds you just never seem to win at in your FM saves. Anfield is that ground for me. I don't think we've ever won at Anfield in the save so far. It's just a place you go and a place you expect to lose. Gonzalez out wide towards Dennis, who nods it into Ramsden. Can we respond instantly? Alan through to Paleo. One on one. Yes, Paleo Maria. Paleo Maria with Jaws' transfer request and makes it 1-1. And I've got to be honest here, you know, I've discussed it a couple of times. He is now starting to score in big games every now and then. Not every big game, but every now and then. He scored in a reverse fixture in Wales against Liverpool. He scored against Spurs a couple of times this season. He scored against Chelsea, I believe, as well. And it's 1-1. Paleo, great composure. Look at the body language on Maria as well. He's calm. He's calm. Now, you very rarely see Maria have positive body language in a big game. Normally, he's anxious or he's frustrated or he's complacent, but today he's calm. And I really like that from the captain. Vinicius Jr. Oh, what a run. Oh, what a goal. What a goal. Second of the game, Vinicius Jr. has just, just blitzed us. He's just around the length of the half and made it 2-1. Jordy heads it away, but he beats Ramses to the ball in the chest, and away he goes. No one was catching up to him. He turns Kimpembe and puts it into the far corner. What a goal. Quality there was just unbelievable. I mean, he just ran the length of the half. 2-1. And once again, we'll have to come from behind if we're going to get something from this game. Ramsden flicks it toward Rizzola. And our right back needs a team here. Hounded down by two red shirts. No one in support. And now here come the hosts on the break. Boyer to Raphael Lucas. Behind on Calvers. You see a man in the middle. It is Boyer. It is free. It is a lethal counter-attack from Liverpool. 3-1, Boyer to Rafael Lucas. And once he shrugs off Gon Calvers, he's away. He's away. And Jordi just couldn't get back on time. Boyer just strokes it in to the bottom corner. All three goals, nothing Dean could do about any of them. They're just so accurately placed. 
We're 3-1 down and we've capitulated in this second half. I mean, Liverpool had been a better team out there, but either way, now what are we made of? We come back again and still prove we've got something left in the tank here. Kimpembe said it to Alenia in the centre circle and out wide towards Ryan. Statistically, we've not done badly out there. Assessing on dispossessed, but it seems like every time Liverpool get the ball back and come forward, they look like scoring. Vinicius Jr. once again is away and plays that wide towards the number seven. First time cross. There he is. Oh, Henderson, fantastic save. And can we get the danger clear? Yes, we can. As Audrey's on makes tackle. What a stop by Dean, keeping us in the game. What I'm going to do now is switch to our Gigan press system and see if we can get something from this. I'll take off Goncalves and I'll bring on the youngster Pedro Antonio. Dennis will have to come off as well. And we'll bring on... We've only got McKenny to play for the middle already. So what we'll do is we'll swap he and Ramsden's roles around and Alenia's roles too. And a change of tactics as well. So 25 minutes to go. Can't see us getting back into this one. It seems like at some point Liverpool are going to get a fourth goal here. Ball over the top. Boyer in behind. And Henderson again makes the save. And Jordy almost inadvertently put it into his own goal and clears off the line. Every time they've came forward today, they look like scoring. I'm surprised it's only 3-1. But it probably won't be for much longer at this rate, though. As McKenney down that right-hand side is going to play it to Pedro Antonio. And back into Alenia. And now Ramsden takes over. If we get a goal, we give ourselves a chance here in the final 15 minutes. Or so to Gonzalez... And the OG, back to the right back. Come on, let's find an opening here. McKenny dinks one in, headed away. And Gonzalez lost it. And Maria, oh, Maria scored. I don't know what happened there, but Maria scored. And there is the goal, 3-2. But well, I want to see that on the replay. That's definitely not down to a change of tactics. That's just good fortune. Bugarin heads it away. And I don't know what on earth that was about. But either way, it deflects straight to Maria on the first time volley. He bags his brace. 3-2. I'm going to shout to the boys on the sidelines and encourage them here. 15 minutes. We can do this. Go very attacking as well. May as well lose the game by more goals by chasing another one. Run at defence. Be more expressive. And let's see if we can get one late chance. Let's just really go for this now, shall we? Let's just really go for this. Take off Kimpembe. Bring on Raheem Sterling. Play McKenney as a ball-playing defender. We'll have, uh, we'll, have, we'll have no ball in midfielder. We'll have, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll go 4-2-2-2. Two, two, two. And we'll really go for it here. Sterling is a shadow striker. May as well just go, go for it right now. Alenia is an advanced playmaker. Just going to go for it. See if we can get one late chance to claim a point. Is there going to be one late opportunity in the game to rescue a point? Gonzalez, long. Oh! No! Oh! <laughs> Pedro Antonio! Pedro Antonio! We've battled back from two goals down to make it 3 3. I I'll tell you what, when the goalkeeper was coming, I was thinking, that's his ball. That's his ball, but he re retreated back to his line. Pedro Antonio, first time strike, squeezed it in between the near post. And makes it 3-3. Oh, what a comeback from Cardiff City. Gonzalez is corner. Headed away. McKenney first to the loose ball. Finds Elena on the edge. Ramsden. Oh, why did he have a dig, mate? You can strike him. Gonzalez. Oh, and Vinicius Jr. is there to clear. And that should do it. What a game. Just like at the Emirates. What a game. 3-3 three, three to final score. Two fantastic six-goal thrillers in the same season. And I'm going to say to the boys passionately in the dressing room, everybody thought we'd get beaten today. Well done for proving them wrong. Great result. We battle back twice. First from a goal down, then from 3-1 down to make it 3-3. Three, three. Maria scored two goals in the game. He's confident in his body language as well. That's fantastic to see. Liverpool go top. But that's a good result for us there. Away at Anfield where we've got a historically poor record. A good point picked up in a very good fight back. Our unbeaten run continues as well. What a game. What a finish. That was fantastic. And that was today's episode of the Football Manager Series, guys. So big thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, please drop a like as like so of course. Very much appreciated. And hit that channel out as well. Much love to you. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. And we'll be back in the next one with Arsenal at home in the Premier League. Another big battle in the top four right now. And then the first leg of our Champions League first knockout round away at Mestalla against Valencia. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon. Bye now.